Hello everyone, my name is Maria and I'm with the Creative Training Center. This session that I'm going to host now is another novelty in our program. Now, we in Creative Training Center and in CGA are dedicated to keep education in pace with industry, as well as providing working professionals with resources to advance their skills. And we work with so many universities and teaching prof professors over these last few years. So we decided to expand the conference stage and present you some of the research papers and works of our esteemed and dear academic community. For this first edition of CG Academic, we chose to focus on papers that examine the use of video games and VR tools in teaching. Two papers that you will be hearing today come from Belgrade. One is from Metropolitan University, presented by Katerina kaplansky ukovic and the second one is from the University of Belgrade School of Electronic, Ele Electrical sorry, Engineering by Vojislav Bogosaljevic, co-authored with Professor Igor Tartalja. Now I will ask Katerina to join us. Hello, Katerina. Just unmute yourself, please. down below on the left side of your screen. Okay. It didn't okay. work because I was trying to share my presentation. Hello, everybody. Well, okay, uh, you, can, you can make a short introduction of your paper. Okay, I will present academic research paper, virtual reality in art studies, di digital sculpting in VR that I have co-authored with Nicola Damiano, who is lead artist in Nordius. You have met him yesterday as a host yeah. of design thinking presentation and Vladimir Petkovic, who is creative director at Adobe. So this is a paper, academic paper that we have uh, wrote for the e-learning conference and uh, it deals in the subject of uh, 3D modeling in VR environments and how it can be implemented in higher education institutions, more specifically in digital art studies. Okay, thank you, Katerina. I will just ask Voice of Igor to join us just to pr uh, introduce themselves. Hello, Igor. Hello, Hello Voislav. everybody. Hello. Okay, now you too can introduce your work. Well, my name is Igor Tartalia. I will present first part of the research done with my colleague Vojislav. Vojislav was my former student. Mm -hmm. uh, that is for introduction. Okay, what about you, Vojislav? What do you have to say in the beginning? Yes, well, I'm a master's, now I'm a master's student at the School of Electrical Engineering, and I'll be presenting the second part of the presentation, the game itself, and the more technical parts of, the, of this work. Okay, okay, thank you all. Now, I'll ask Katerina first to show us her presentation. Katerina, you have 15 minutes, and then Igor and Vojislav will present their work. They have 15 minutes together, so Katerina can start now. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Maria. I hope this sharing will work now. Do you see presentation? No. Mm, I, I think not. No? Okay. Now. Okay, now we see it. Thank okay, you. <laughs> great. Okay. I didn't hear you now, but I hope you can hear me. Okay. Some technical issues here. <laughs> uh, so this is the name of the academic paper, Virtual Reality in Art Studies. Digital Sculpting in VR, as I said, I co-authored it with Nicola and Vladimir, who are highly recognized professionals in 3D art, and I needed their professional expertise to help me conduct this research. And although I'm not a 3D artist, I have studied sculpture before I have turned to digital media and web design. So this subject was personally very interesting to me since I never liked complicated 3D software and their interfaces and sculpting in VR was completely different experience. 
So back to paper, this paper has been written for the International E-Learning Conference. As I said, that was organized at Metropolitan University in Belgrade, where I teach. And since we have online students for more than 10 years at university and we teach 3D modeling and animation at Faculty of Digital Arts, there has been also growing interest in application of virtual reality in the near future cu curricula. So all of this combined led us to this research paper where we wanted to explore the impact uh, of the available VR sculpting tools that are uh, commercially available on the existing 3D production workflows and all the prospects for their future implementation in academic art studies. So we can define digital sculpting like a 3D modeling paradigm where freeform surfaces are manipulated with tools that mimic real life sculpting of soft materials like clay. And this paradigm is particularly effective when designing organic shapes, since artists do not have concerns about mesh connectivity and topology details. Digital sculpting and or, or 3D modeling has been thought for more than 15 years in various universities as a part of digital art studies, interactive and graphic design studies, multimedia studies, game art and other various interdisciplinary studies. Many institutions have also begun offering an option for online studies, although physical or studio-based learning is still dominant education model in art-related faculties. So the recent development of VR sculpting software uh, and fast advancement of VR technology resulted in growing development of the community that practices 3D sculpting in VR. So we use this potential to distribute our questionnaire to 3D artists. And here Nicola and Vladimir contributed mostly with their networks. So finally we gathered and processed 66 anonymous responses from people with backgrounds in 3D art. So let's get to defining VR environment. VR can be broadly broken down into two main categories, and those are VR, desktop VR or DVR, and immersive VR or IVR. DVR is typically classified in, as non-immersive, and uh, participants manipulates virtual environment on the computer screen by using keyboard or mouse. And here on this slide, you can see a browser-based VR app, Mozilla Hubs. And below, this image shows uh, University of Nottingham, where students take course entirely in virtual reality. On the other hand, IVR is typically multimodal in nature, and it is providing a sense of immersion in the environment throughout uh, 360 degree visuals by an aid of head mounted displays or VR headsets, so we, as we call them. And also, we have auditory simulation uh, through the use of earphones. Many applications work also both with flat screens and VR, and that is, uh, this trend is, can be seen in most uh, VR softwares, uh, so that artists can easily switch between the two at any point. Uh, these days we can use uh, head-mounted displays or VR headsets like HTC Vive and Oculus that are connected to computer, and more, more, more popular standalone VR headsets like Oculus Quest, that is now called MetaQuest, Vive Focus, or uh, Sony PlayStation VR, Valve Index, or Steam VR, and Windows Mixed Reality headsets. There are many more, more uh, available now at the market. Now, in this slide, we can see a breakdown of current available tools for painting, sculpting, and animating in VR. So from the available tools, I would like to point out Adobe Medium, uh, Gravity Sketch, Codon VR that is not included in this 
table uh, Adobe Substance 3D Modeler, which is in closed beta and Masterpiece VR, because these apps are concentrated on sculpting and this real feeling sculpting in VR. But of course, further development of these tools and others that are in this table uh, depend on their business model and their commercial success. So at this phase, we must conclude that there is still a long way to go before some of them become standard in producing 3D graphics. And as for the standard software in 3D modeling, uh, they are mostly desktop sculpting tools. According to our questionnaire, a most dominant desktop sculpting tool is a ZBrush. 70% respondents noted that they use it, followed up by Blender, Maya, and Madbox. And most of the artists that responded to our questionnaire, also 70% of them, checked two to five tools that they use for 3D modeling. Many respondents also included some VR tools in the list uh, of their preferred 3D sculpting, uh, such as we can see here Adobe Medium, few times mentioned because they could add other tools that they use, um, Gravity Sketch, Codon VR, etc. So considering that modeling is just one of the aspects of 3D art and that artists use additional tools for texturing, lightning, staging the scene, animation, etc. It is clear why the production <laughs> workflow can be overwhelming for beginners and why high education institutions might have a difficult time deciding which software licenses they should buy in order to teach students 3D art. And here in this slide, we have example of this. We can see screenshots from Nikola Damianov's uh, art station. He was hosting a live stream on Behance, demonstrating his workflow for VR sculpting and texturing. And you can see here all the other, stool, other tools that he used to get his short video and these interesting textures. You can check it out on his art station. In our paper, we also explored the user experience and uh, ergonomy of VR headsets concerning the ergonomic, ergonomics of VR headsets and working in these environments, our survey resulted in the conclusion that 56% of respondents found the VR environment more, more dynamic than desktop environment, 32% found it more exhausting and 12% found it to be the same as the desktop environment. And VR sculpting tools also assume the use of controllers. We still don't use only hands for gestures. And we asked our participants how they felt about, <clears throat> sorry, about controllers. So 73% respondents uh, said that controllers were fine while 20% found them complicated, or they thought there was a lack of tactile feedback and the user experience could definitely be improved. As for the implementing VR technology in high education institutions, in the project EDUCASE, authors have identified two distinct problems in implementing VR technology in those institutions, and those are of technical and pedagogical aspect. Well, it is inevitable that technical issues will arise with any rapidly developing or complex technology, and those 3D technologies are definitely both. And among the technical problems for institutions, we can distinguish hardware and software issues like powerful computer configurations, graphic cards, and fast internet connection if we want our teachers to use collaborative VR environments. On the other side of this e-learning model, we have students who need to provide their own VR units along with powerful computers and internet connections in order to be able to create and share their 3D models. 64% uh, of respondents in the survey think that VR station is a big investment and 36% disagree. 
We didn't include the students in the survey, but since they mostly do not have personal income, we could assume that they might perceive it as a big investment. Although a game-ready PC is usually considered to be a solid configuration for VR as well. VR ready, so they call them. And after configuring the hardware and software to work correctly, next comes the learning curve for figuring out how to use it. And we always count on categories like uh, innovators and early adopters who tend to enjoy experimentation. And in the context of higher education, this often means faculty members and students who have innovative projects and who are comfortable with technology and want to devote time to learn how to use it. Pedagogical aspect of implementing new technology requires faculty members to figure out how to integrate it in their courses so that the technology provide, uh, provides clear benefits. And uh, as for collaborative possibilities for, possibilities for collaboration in digital sculpting in VR, uh, it has been already featured in many VR sculpting tools, such as uh, Gravity Sketch, VR Art Studio, and Masterpiece VR. And Adobe Medium provides Studio Share for only two users, and they cannot share models. They can work only on their own models. Nevertheless, the questionnaire showed that almost 50% of artists did not try co collaborating in VR, but the 40% who did try it uh, were rather satisfied. And generally, collaborative systems are not well established in computer graphics compared to software development. Usually artists work alone and share their final models by sending files. Uh, we have to mention also uh, e-learning environment that should uh, find a way to motivate students to finish their studies. Since e-learning students often have feeling of isolation, lack of technology support, and collaborative VR environments could likely provide tools to overcome these downsides of e-learning. There is also subject of accessibility that needs to be addressed in the context of implementing VR sculpting in higher education institutions. Since uh, technology has to be accessible for uh, teachers as well for the students. And there is also a question of accessibility of existing interfaces and controllers that has not been yet addressed. And finally, we asked a few questions about NFT marketplaces and other emerging technologies. Uh, we can define NFTs as blockchain traded rights to any digital asset. This, incl this includes images, videos, music, and even parts of virtual worlds. And these markets, of course, opened new possibilities, not only for 3D artists, but for all digital media creatives, since they now can sell their digital work uh, more easily and their career and employment won't be solely directed towards the gaming and film industries. So in our survey, we got rather even results on the question of if they, they thought uh, that NFT market would change the way we perceive, make, and teach art. So 52% yes, said yes, and 48% uh, said no. And uh, we also asked respondents if they thought that technologies like 3D scanning and artificial intelligence are threatening for 3D sculptors, uh, where 46% of respondents found them quite helpful. Uh, 26 did not find them, 26%, sorry, <laughs> did not find them threatening. And 15% found them threatening and 14, almost 14% found them a little threatening. So to conclude, implementing VR systems in higher education institutions could be challenging from the economical and technological point of view. But the most important aspect is that technology provides clear benefits. And 
Collaborative VR, VR environments could also help in motivating e-learning students to finish their studies since they drop out more often than traditional students. Uh, VR creation tools will be essential in five years as well as more augmented, extended or mixed reality tools since they provide less detachment from the real environment and do not provoke dizziness and nausea as VR headsets tend to. So over the coming years, technological advancements and more accessible interfaces will contribute to the implementation of VR sculpting tools in online art studies, but it is essential to ensure that they are used correctly and to their full potential. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Sorry, I was muted, <laughs> Katerina. Thank you for this presentation. Uh, stay with us while Igor and Voislav present theirs, and then we will answer the questions later. Okay. Now I will call Igor and Voislav to join us. Okay. Well, so you can you can start your presentation now. Are. Igor, you will be the first. Wow. Well. I suppose you can see when I change slides. Well, uh, just a comment in the beginning. Um, our original paper was published at ETRAN 2020 conference. And here is a link to the published paper. Unfortunately, from the point of view of CGA conference, the paper is written in Serbian. Also, you can find here links to complete documents, functional specification, UML model, and ARENA executable. In the first part of the presentation, I will tell you a few words about computer graphics course and try to explain how we organize practical students' work at the course. In the second part, Voisla will focus the development of 3D video game ARENA which is a result of his diploma work and will be presented here just as a case study. To be precise, Vojsla was student demonstrator at computer gra graphic course, and he is author of the ideas related to development of the Reina game. Well, Computer Graphics course at University of Belgrade School of Electrical Engineering is an introductory bachelor or master level course, followed by course Computer Graphics 2 at master level. There are three groups of topics at the course. Those are Computer Graphics Programming, Computer Graphics Algorithms, and Computer Graphics Technologies. My today presentation is predominantly related to the first group, computer graphics programming. Our methodology combines, I think successfully, theory and practice and focuses to students' practical work. My lectures are followed with exercises held by teaching assistants. Though those exercises are predominantly in the form of demonstration of solutions of some computer graphics programming problems. Students' practical work is performed through laboratory exercises and project given as a homework. Selected platform for computer graphics programming is Java language and Java FX library. Why we selected this platform? For an introductory computer graphics course, this platform offers, by my opinion, the most appropriate level of abstraction. It gives nice opportunity to practice all programming concepts learned. It is better suited to expected outcomes of the introductory course than low, lower level, level graphics libraries like OpenGL, especially Vulkan. Also, I think that selected platform is more appropriate than famous game engines like Unity, which provide high, higher level of abstraction, deliberating students from some programming tasks.
Now we will take a look to the aims of students' practical work at our computer graphics course. The first one is transformation of theoretical knowledge acquired at lectures to practical issues. Students have an opportunity to acquire practical skills in computer graphics programming. On the other hand, teacher has an excellent opportunity to evaluate students' ability to apply acquired knowledge. An important aim is to provide tasks which give students some continuous practical work during the semester, preparing them to the final exam and to successful, successfully continue computer graphics education, attending advanced course computer graphics too on the master level. By our experience, practical work around development or retro style 2D and 3D video games produces high level of student motivation. A very important issue, we expose our students to real problem of upgrading some application core to incremental development stages, starting from demonstrational laboratory exercises through control laboratory tasks to relatively complex projects leading to the initial, uh, leading the initial code core to functional video game completed in diploma or even master thesis. On this slide, you can see how we implemented concepts of students' practical work trying to satisfy mentioned aims. There are two laboratory terms devoted to development in 2D domain and two laboratory terms devoted to development in 3D domain. Our laboratory terms are about two hours and 15 minutes. In each domain, we dedicate first laboratory term to code nucleus explanation. Students are required just to add one or two features with demonstrator's help. In the second laboratory term, students should implement a number of more complex, but still relatively simple functional requirements. They should produce a sketch of the video game in 135 minutes. Each laboratory task has its continuation in a more complicated set functional upgrades, leading the developed video game to a fully op operational application, the game prototype. Requirements for homework are dimensioned in such manner to, com to be completed in several days. Projects are presented to teachers and defended by answering teachers' questions. Development could be continued through additional steps done in diploma or master work. Diploma work results in a completed video game. I mean, students should add menus, rank lists, additional levels, additional bonuses, background music and sound effects, settings on sub-parameters, help system, and similar features of video games. Usual additional task for master work can be to add a knowledge, uh, knowledge quiz support to the game. Student is requested to develop question and quiz editor and quiz player. This way game becomes educational or serious game. Another possible avenue for master work could be transformation of the developed desktop game, desktop game to a web game or to mobile game. The table contains topics for video games development we used in past several years. As you can see, Arena was one of those topics for 3D game development. Finally, before Voicelab takes over the presentation, we can see a short sample of results analysis. The results consider only one school year when 35 students attended the computer graphics course. Rows of the table present student activities, while columns present number of students which performed an activity, their average mark in range from 0 to 100 for appropriate activity, and st standard mark deviation. What can see and conclude? Accordingly to our course rules, it is possible to compensate control laboratory with project. Our students are really overloaded with tasks during the semester on many courses, and consequently a number of students haven't enough time to prepare themselves for laboratory work in the appropriate moments. So we have to give them possibility to postpone their practical work when they have enough time to complete their homework projects. 
that is the reason we we have considerably less control lab average mark compared to average project mark as a short conclusion i can say that labs are very important for early learning start so am i satisfied when 26 of 35 students understand this fact well now voice love takes over the presentation okay thank you uh, as for the features of the arena game uh, it has several cameras the default of which is the first person perspective the player character is controlled by keyboard and mouse there are three rooms with different types of obstacles so there are bonuses such as coins for points hearts for life regeneration and so on the game can be paused resumed and restarted and this all may seem trivial but everything's been done with a relatively low number of lines of code and it's relatively simple for other students to extend upon there's also the main menu the settings menu the pause menu and even background music and sound effects let me now go on to the demo you can see that the game is obviously very spectacular let me show you a video so here we can see the main menu the player is instantly thrown in the arena with the spikes as the first type of obstacle there are uh, here you can see the coins they give points obviously and picked up let me skip this just a bit uh if the player touches these spikes uh, they get hurt it doesn't happen now but it will happen soon enough for the demonstration yes the screen flashed red and when the timer runs out in the first room uh the gates are opened then leading to the following room and that second room has a different type of obstacle the these uh, these projectiles uh the heart that appears in the distance uh regenerates life when picked up as expected so let me not waste too much of the time here when the timer runs out in this room i guess the clock would extend the timer uh the gates are now open to this third room uh, the player can sprint for a short amount of time uh as long as he has enough energy which can be seen in the upper left corner in the bar uh, and when the timer runs out here in the third room let me skip this just a tiny bit till the end when the timer runs out here the game is over and the leaderboard will appear and the player will be allowed to explore the let's call it the world of this arena and that's basically it you'll see now the pause menu and everything's working as expected I guess so let me continue with this this is the software architecture of the arena these are just this is just an uml overview of the classes and uh, packages in java uh, as for the software implementation regarding the game engine or the lack of one uh, the central part of the game engine is uh, the timer which java fix offers as a library in that timer, which takes around, uh, which takes 60 times per second, everything is computed, including collisions, uh, movement, and everything else. As for some of the more inter rather interesting problems and solutions, with, which required a bit more of thinking, uh, there was things such as player player orientation and movement, which requires everyone, which required everyone's favorite trigonometry, perhaps a sign at a cosine or a couple of them. Pausing uh, and resuming the game required a bit of thinking also, and the heart object model required uh, required me to create a 3D mesh programmatically. JavaFX was used, as already mentioned, and the JavaStream API helped uh, do some things more easily in a functional manner. Here are some technical characteristics. Let's focus on the numbers of the number of lines of code. You can see them jumping from each stage to stage. And a short summary. This presentation is a combined viewpoint of, uh, from a teacher's perspective and a student's perspective. Focus was on practical work on a computer graphics course and the faculty, and this game served as a case study. As a conclusion, uh, Java FX proved to be a fairly good choice for an, for an introductory computer graphics course. It's simple to teach, simple to learn, and it offers enough, enough power without providing the amenities that a game engine would otherwise have provided, forcing the students to program everything. And developing a game is fairly good for motivation, and it's 
still challenging. Some of the next steps were mentioned by the professor already. So I'll just quickly finish this and not waste any more of your time. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please ask. Okay, thank you all. I will ask Katerina to join us now. Uh, Katerina, mute, please. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. So uh, we don't have much time. We have like five minutes left. So I will ask one question concerning everyone. I think that you all can find yourself in this question. So that would be, uh, what was the most challenging thing for you when you were work working on this paper? And uh, how was it like to cooperate? Katarina, you cooperated with people from industry and Igor and Vojslav, you cooperated also as a student and a teacher. So we can start from Katarina. Well, um, for our research and for me, it is always creating this questionnaire, <laughs> uh, the most challenging and finding right uh, questions and uh, getting people to answer them. <laughs> so yeah. Nicole and Vladimir helped with this because of their networks. And but I had great cooperation with those two guys because they are both involved in some kind of education through their work and uh, they both have university degrees. So they understand also how academic programs and how this research works. So it was very easy and very interesting because uh, they have so much experience. Uh, in the in the field. Okay, thank you. What about you, Igor? What do you say? What was the most challenging thing for you? Uh, maybe Vojslav will answer <laughs> on that part of the question. Uh, I, I will try to answer uh, on the second okay. part of the question. How was it like to cooperate on okay, this okay. research? Yes. Well, when you have an outstanding student, collaboration is a real pleasure for a professor. Generally speaking, uh, my experience was very good in several last years. Students were very motivated and they produced nice video games. Thank you. And regarding the hardest okay. part, the most challenging part of this, well, besides the game development being hard per se, uh, it was probably in this case uh, maintaining a balance between well a small and scalable number of lines of code and a game that has at least some point some purpose basically that okay thank you all and since we have a few more minutes i would like to ask you will you keep up the research in this area concerning computer graphics what are your maybe future plans you can start Vaisla. Well, in my case, I guess I will improvise. I have plans to uh, create video games perhaps on my own in my free time. So we'll okay. see where it leads. And I do it actually professionally combined with mm -hmm. the backend development, actually. But it's a combination of game development and backend development. So that's not pure game development, but we'll see. OK, that is nice to hear. And what about you, Igor? Muted. You're muted. Sorry. Yes, no, no, is no, it's okay. Microphone, okay. Uh, well, uh, you saw that uh, we had uh, just one year uh, analysis of, of results, and I, I plan to extend this analysis to several years, and that will be uh, the first next step for me. Okay. And you, Katerina? Well, uh, definitely I will continue, especially now that digital art is getting more commercial value and uh, also commercial projects are becoming more experimental and artistic. And um, of course, there is this uh, implementation of digital art in this new hype of metaverse, as your conference is all about. So there are a lot of things that we should and could explore furthermore. Okay, so thank you all for joining us today and sharing your presentations. I hope that our community of academics and everyone who are teaching and maybe using new tools will have something to get inspired with and to follow their own approach to the teaching. So thank you all. See you again thank next you. year. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye.